In this recording, I'm going to combine the Symphony Messenger service with RabbitMQ in order to perform asynchronous PHP tasks using a queue system. In order to follow along, you'll need to have the AMQP PHP extension installed and enabled. I'm going to be using PHP 7.4. In order to connect to RabbitMQ, I shall be using Docker. I record in high resolution, so in order to have the best possible viewing experience, I recommend that you choose high def. And also, if you're new to my channel and would like to see more of my content, you can do so by clicking subscribe and the little notification icon. I'm going to start by creating a new Symfony project and to do that I'm using the Symfony binary. If you don't have a Symfony binary on your computer then you can either Google it or just refer to some of my earlier recordings. So I'm doing Symfony New Messenger will be the project name and project folder. And also if you pick the same version as me then everything should work the same as mine. With that done I'm just going to move into the Messenger folder and then I'm going to grab the Messenger package. So I'll clear my screen and the way I do that is Symphony Composer Require and doing it this way you can just say Messenger. And so that will install the Messenger package with various pieces for use with AMQP Redis etc. Let's check out the Composer JSON file and there you can see Symphony Messenger has been installed. Okay so now we need to create a message. The way this works is you have messages and you have message handlers. Message handlers do the work, messages tend to provide just data. So here I've created a message folder inside the source folder and now I'm adding a message class which I will call order confirmation email. Another thing I'll say about messages is that they don't have to extend any other class or implement any other class but these need to be serialized so any properties etc just keep them small and light. Strings, IDs, this is why I'm not passing an order into the constructor as in an order entity. I'll just pass in an order ID and if I need to get that I can query for it later. So with that created I'm now going to create my message handler. So in the same source folder I'm going to create a message handler folder and then I'm going to create a handler for the order confirmation email. So I'll just call it order confirmation email handler. And so this one actually does need to implement another class. It's going to implement the message handler interface. So I'm using a bit of auto completion there. We'll have a look at that class. As you can see, this interface doesn't have any of its own methods. And like it says in the comments, it's a marker interface. By implementing message handler interface, you're registering this internally with Symfony as a message handler. And this class will be a callable, so we create an invoke method, and this is where we pass in our order confirmation email. All the work takes place in this method. What we need to do now is think about what we're actually doing here. So if you can imagine you place an order on an e-commerce site, and then an email notification is sent, well an email can be quite a large unwieldy long process you don't want to keep always want to keep your users waiting for an email to be sent so what will happen here is a notification confirmation will be returned and the browser returned to the user and then the email sending will go off and happen in the background on a queue so no waiting involved these jobs just go onto the queue and a worker pops them off one after the other what I've done here is I'm just mimicking sending an email I'm going to demonstrate this synchronously first. In order to do that, I'm just going to do it in the browser. So I'll create a controller, which extends abstract controller. And we just want to create a quick method in order to demonstrate this. And this will take a message bus interface. And the bus is what's used to dispatch a message onto a queue. Now the abstract controller actually has a dispatch message method built in but I didn't want to baffle you with too much magic at the moment so I'm just being explicit and showing you exactly what classes are used under the hood. 
If you have an idea of what pieces are involved, then it's much easier to debug when things go wrong. So I'm just going to return a response, just a message which says your order has been placed. And I'll need to add some routing. So in order to use routing annotations, I need to pull in the annotations package. I can do that doing Symphony Composer require annotations. OK, back to the controller. And I'm just going to call this route place order. And you'll notice that I also give the route a name. It's a habit that I've got into because should you decide that you want to change this route if you're using internal naming, then it makes life much easier. Start up the server. And I'm just going to cut this or copy this, paste into the browser. And the URI is place order. And so that happens synchronously, meaning everything has happened in the foreground one step after the other. And that's why you see the sending email now message, which we put in the order notification handler. If this had been handled in the background, placed onto a queue, you won't actually see that now. All you would see is the response, your order has been placed, because the email would have been handled in the background asynchronously. So let's do that now. OK. So in order to handle messages asynchronously, we have to configure a transport, which is what I'm doing here. And I've called this transport async. And so in order to route my messages to the async transport, I just simply give it this name, async. The name can be anything. This isn't a convention. I could have called it foo or whatever. What does matter is that our application has a transport up and running that it can communicate with. I'm going to use something called RabbitMQ, which is a popular open source message broker system. And the way I'm going to get Rabbit is by using Docker. So I'll create a Docker Compose file. This is going to be really, really basic. So even if you're not familiar with Docker, as long as you have Docker Desktop installed on your computer, if you just follow along, I have other um, recordings on Docker on my channel. Check them out if you want to go into it in more depth. Make sure you use exactly the same names as what I've used here. So RabbitMQ is the service name. And also in the Messenger YAML file, I use RabbitMQ underscore DSN. So I'm just going to grab a tag name here, the RabbitMQ page on Docker Hub. And so what I need to put for the image is RabbitMQ colon. I'll just paste that in and delete these extra bits that were copied with it. Ports. Again, this isn't really a docker tutorial. If you just copy the settings I'm using here, it'll work for you. If you want to know more about this stuff, then obviously you can check out my other docker recordings. OK, over to the terminal. Let's spin that up. So the first time that you run it, it'll go and grab the rabbit image from Docker Hub. And now I'm just going to mimic sending an email by putting sleep for five seconds. And this will pause the application for five seconds. Then I'm going to run the transport. The way I do this is Symphony Console Messenger Consume. You need your transport name, which we said was async. VV will give us some console messages to show us what's going on. So let's go and give that a refresh. OK, so I was probably a bit slow that time. I'll do it again and I'll go straight back to the console afterwards. So we're waiting. It's saying it's received the message waiting five seconds and there we go the confirmation email was handled successfully i've stopped the transport i'm going to open the rabbit client i do that with symphony open colon local colon rabbit mq i apologize because i was already signed in when i recorded this you can sign in using the username and password which you see at the top of the screen okay so i'm going to go back to the browser and i'm going to refresh this five times one two three four five back over to the rabbit client so what i'm expecting to see here is the messages going onto the queue but not actually coming off they're just going to stay in this ready position and the reason for that is that we stopped our transport from running so we'll need to go back over to the terminal and set it going again and then hopefully we'll see these messages getting popped off 
So over to the terminal, run the command which is symphony console messenger colon consume. Then you need the transport name which is async. So that's up and running. Let's go back over to Rabbit. Okay, and now you see these going down. So it looks like roughly every five seconds, which is how long we put our little hack in to say we thought that an email would take five seconds to send. And the queue worker will just keep popping these off one after another. Um, first in, first out. And so if you have something in one of your projects, which is a lengthy piece of processing and you don't want to have the user wait for everything to complete before you return back to them, then this is perfect. You know, the best way to learn this stuff is to actually pull it into your own projects. So this has really just been an introduction to synchronous messaging. I hope you've found it informative and enjoyable. I should caution you about the overuse of this stuff before you introduce it into your projects. Have a think about do you really need it by adding asynchronous processes and also third party things like Rabbit. You're introducing complexity. Software development is a series of trade offs. Be sure to stay pragmatic. If you have any questions about what you've just watched, then leave them in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you and I do respond to them all. And also, if you want YouTube to show you more of my content, all you need to do is subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.